Baba Shuaib, the correctional officer, born in Accra, Ghana, a Quranic researcher and a critical thinker based on religion, who does online lectures based on the guidance of the Quran on platforms such as Facebook, YouTube and TikTok since 2018, in Finland, and 13 years, QBE, in Classical Arabic and MSA in Quranic Arabic. The author of the Refer to the Quran which helps every novice to understand the steps towards understanding the great Quran and the guidance of God in it. <music> Baba Shuaib, the correctional officer, born in Accra, Ghana, a Quranic researcher and a critical thinker based on religion, who does online lectures based on the guidance of the Quran on platforms such as Facebook, YouTube and TikTok since 2018, in Finland, and 13 years, QBE, in Classical Arabic and MSA in Quranic Arabic. The author of the Refer to the Quran which helps every novice to understand the steps towards understanding the great Quran and the guidance of God in it. Now, listen, during the night time, and eat and drink until the whitish thread becomes clear to you from the blackish thread of dawn. Because you are coming throughout the night. The night time, God has made it lawful for you to last after your women, to eat and drink during the night time. Use, it, use that for eating and doing all your activities. Then as soon as it goes to the dawn time, you see the, the, the sky starts becoming white and then the black thread of night starts vanishing. So now the, the, the sky starts becoming clear. The, the whitish part starts appearing. So when that happens at dawn, that is when you conclude and you stop eating. Because that is when the fasting, this abstinence is going to start. So you are going to abstain from sex. You are going to abstain from food. You are going to abstain from drink. It's a test to test your piousness. If God refrains you from something, can you actually refrain? That is the test. It's a test. Do you get my point? Uh -huh. So now, then conclude the abstinence at night. So now it goes like a cycle. So you started from the night. You can eat, you can drink, you can last after your women. Then at dawn time, you stop. No eating, no drinking, no lasting. Now you are going to do the abstinence straight out up to night again. So it's like a cycle. So daytime, no eating, daytime, no drinking, and daytime, no... You understand? Aha. Uh -huh. Now, when we say Layl, Layl, if you go to Quran chapter 92 verse 1, it says, When Layl is a yagsha. When we say Layl, it means darkness. When is covered. That's night time. Darkness. That is layl. God didn't say il al maghrib. He didn't say il al gurub. He didn't say il al ashi. He says till night. God didn't say you should break your fasting at Isha. He never said you should break your fasting at maghrib. You already know yourself, the mushriks. You have been doing it. You go and break your fast at maghrib. You go and break your fast at Isha, you're wasting your energy. If your boss asks you to work from 1 o'clock to 6 o'clock, and you're working from 1 o'clock to 5 o'clock, have you fulfilled the requirement? No, you haven't. So keep that in mind. If your boss asks you to work from 1 to 6, and you are working from 1 to 5, have you fulfilled the agreement? No, you haven't. So ask yourself again. Do you get my point? You get it? If you don't get it, forget about it. Aha. Uh -huh. So God says here, He says, Thumma atim, atimmu suyama in a layl. You conclude the abstinence at night. He didn't say at Maghrib, He didn't say at Isha. What time does night time start? I'm going to help you. If you want to know the time that night starts, we have something we call twilight. There is twilight. There's three, uh, three different types of twilight. There's astronomical twilight. 
there is civil twilight and there is nautical twilight astronomical twilight is closer to the night time to the dark part so that one you can use night time starts with the twilight but not the nautical twilight uh, sorry not the nautical twilight let me let me let me show you here i have a video i did on this i have a lecture on my youtube i gave the the uh the the graph i put on on the screen you try to check that lecture uh the name of that topic is lunar solar calendar uh, of ramadan or something try to watch that lecture it's on my youtube channel go to the playlist the siam series i have it there right now when you take quran chapter uh 17 verse 78 the time night time starts is this it is defined there so for those watching on youtube and facebook i'm putting it on the screen you can see but those on tiktok unfortunately you cannot see but this is how it goes god says akim is salat now this gasak we call it dusk or we we can say twilight gasakil layl now layl has what we call twilight but this twilight of the night is what today we classify as astronomical twilight because it is closer to the darkness hour it is exactly before darkness looms so this twilight that is the time night time starts because definition of night is in surah to layl chapter 92 verse 1 is isa yagsha so night means it has been covered that's why darkness appears if you are breaking your fast at maghrib you are fooling yourself if you are breaking your fast at ashi or isha you are fooling yourself you are not smarter than god quran chapter 10 verse 82 wa yuhikku allah wal haqq bi kalimatihi wa law karaha al mujrimun god will enforce the truth with his words not my words not your words not your scholars words not the prophet's words wa yuhikku allah wal haqq bi kalimatihi wa law karaha al mujrimun and god will enforce the truth with his words even if the criminals dislike it you know the criminals right the ones who break their fast at maghrib aha uh -huh. god knows what maghrib is if you want to say il al ghurub or il al maghrib he will have said it il al ashi he will have said it he says il al layl thumma atimmu siyam il al layl complete or conclude the siyam at night he didn't say at maghrib stop fooling yourself if you cannot do the siyam it's not by force the boss you are working for he says start from dawn and end at night you out of your foolishness you start from dawn and then you end at sunset check the definition of sunset it is not part of the night check the definition of evening it is not part of the night the word sunset it is not classified as night time the word evening is not classified as night time the word night is a different ball game altogether if you cannot do it forget about it <clears throat> yeah assalamu alaikum ladies and gentlemen uh thank you all for coming peace be upon you all this is baba shrap the correctional officers page um yeah so this program is going to be about a correctional officers den right uh -huh. i'll be giving chance for people to call on the program yes i'll be giving chance for people to call on the program but however uh i'll play i have to play one video uh to make a point before i allow that to happen yeah <clears throat> uh -huh. so you saw the video i played i played it for a reason so i did a lecture on that right i have a full lecture but i played it for a reason because some people are not actually paying attention to what the quran says huh okay so 
when you get to listen to that video again, then you can actually see the missing link. Um, just a second. <clears throat> yeah, then you can actually see the missing link in, in the understanding you had before. Uh, because it seems a lot of people don't know that uh, the the CM the, the abstinence you've been practicing, um, you've been you've been breaking your fast at the wrong time. Uh, uh, the video I just played gives you the breakdown. When you listen to the video again, it gives you. I have a full lecture on that. It gives you the breakdown of how to understand when night starts. So kindly pay attention, right? Uh -huh. Pay attention to that. So after this program, you can replay. Then you get the everything which was said in in the video. Uh, anyways, let me give some shout out. Peace be upon you all. But I was in the Shaitan Rajim. We have Quran only. Uh, then we have Mchizi, Sniper, we have Yo-Yo, uh, Rashid, Sobright. Then we have Samir, Ramfal. We have uh, Mood Ashari, uh, Mamadi, Jar Jarju. We have Tariq Ayub, Turki, Al Mutairi. Um... <laughs> We have D Rugs, right? D Rugs two one five. Abu C C. I see you, Salam. I see you, brother Kamal. Kam K. I see you. Uh, Abdul Abbas. Uh, Quranic explanation. Salam alaikum to you. Um, thank you, Turkey Al Mutair. Yes, thank you. Um, he says this intro is long. Whenever you see my intro getting longer, it's because I'm doing something, right? So I have to get it ready before I, you know. Hey, salam, Baba Sayyid, Naganka. Salam, Mawiya, Naganka. Salam to you. Uh, I see you. Uh, Tan Mirza, uh, Musa Arabogo, I see you. Um, Quranic explanation says, can we join and have a discussion, Baba Shwaib? I'll be given the chance for that to happen. Yeah, but it will be based on 10, 10 to 15 minutes for a, each person who hops on, right? So I'll give chance for that. Um, I see you. Yes. Uh, Don, Don Nuru, I see you. Yes. Salam. I see YSG. Uh, Abdul Samad, I see you. Um, Chase Scott, one love to you. Yes, you're welcome. Uh, let me see. Uh, Abu Thomas, I see you. Imran Khan, yeah. Uh, yes, I see you. Hey, Zamani, but you writing. I see you, bro. Uh, Raf Raf. Yes, we have Marwan Divaj. I see you. Salam to you, Ibrahim Muhammad. Um, Balogun, yes, brother Balogun. I see you, uh, Mawia Naganka. I see you, Mawia. Yes, so the list is, is a bit long. Muti Muti Fusaini, I see you. Um, thank you, thank you all for coming. I appreciate your presence. Uh, yeah, I appreciate your presence. All of you, thank you. Uh, Salish Jimmy, I see you. Salam. Um, Bimbaz, Barsalim, I see you. Salam to you. Thank you all for coming. Uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, for those on TikTok, let me see. Uh, TikTok, I have uh, anime. I have Lincoln. I have uh, Nasio. I have user 83315 and so on. Yes. I see uh, Sinan, Sinan Suleiman. I see you. Salam to you. Um, Hamza Jahid. Yes, Hamza. I see you. Um, 
I see peacemaker. Yes, peacemaker, I see you. So for those on TikTok, I can see you all. Thank you all for coming. I can see about 40 people online already. Um, yes, Habib Kamara, I see you. Hassan Abdullah, thank you all for coming. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this has taken five minutes to go through the list. <laughs> I guess very soon I might need glasses to start checking for those who are invisible also <laughs> at the back. So thank you all for coming. I appreciate your presence. God bless you all. Haruna Amadu, yeah, thank you all. Peace be upon you all. So let, let's go. So um, let me play this guy's video because uh, our time has taken, uh, you know, stall already. So let me play this guy's video. There's a guy, there's a guy, I saw his video. I, I think those based in the UK, you, you might know him. But however, uh, I, I just want to show you the madness, the madness of this Hadith Yunus, how, you know, what is wrong with their brain? Uh, so let me play this video. And after that, I'll just talk about the video. Then I'll give the chance. Uh, I'll explain some few verses. Then I'll, I'll I'll talk about some few verses. Then I'll give the chance for the callers to call, right? Uh-huh. And sister, let me ask you guys a question, right? If one now decided to have a zina with his mother, and after having zina, he comes to realization that he has impregnated her. Doesn't stop there. He takes her life and then buries her in a place that nobody knows about. This is the first scenario. You have someone who used to look after his mother and he would massage her feet every single night. He was someone who would pray in the night and then fast in the day. However, when he went to Al Medina, he made dua to the Messenger Sallallahu just once. Oh Messenger of Allah, I'm going through all of these difficulties. Please ask Allah Azza wa Jal to help me. He's making dua to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or he's using the Messenger of Allah as an intermediary to Allah Jalla Fi Ula. Which one's worse? The first or the second? Second? This man, he impregnated his own mother and then killed her. And then he buried her in a location that nobody knows about. This person is better than the second who used to pray in the night and massage the feet of his mother? Yes. Brothers and sisters, if the second individual who prays in the night and fasts in the day and he massages the feet of his mother, passes away. Just having made dua once to the Prophet Sallallahu this person is 110 times worse than the first individual. Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bih wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalik. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala does not forgive shirk if you die upon it. If you die upon shirk, brothers and sisters, you are not coming out of the hellfire. As Allah clearly and explicitly told us twice in the Quran. So um, this guy's name is uh, is it Abu Abu Taymiya, right? Abu Abu Taymiya is from UK. I don't know if this guy sees himself like a, one of the disciples or one of the Sahabas of the Prophet. <laughs> Abu Abu Taymiya, right? He he likes to dress like this, like Jesus, the fake Jesus in the movies you watch. Like you know, this guy and Ahi. I don't know who is trying to be like the fake Jesus, but uh, this guy, <laughs> I'm serious. The Mushriks, they are kaput in the head. You think I'm joking, right? No, I'm serious. If you think these Mushriks are the ones going to lead you to Jannah, then forget about it. I'm serious. Forget. The door is closed for you. I'm serious. This one, <laughs> these are the Hobulos family, the Hobulos, the uh, that lane. The Asim Hal Hakim, you know that lane. Uh -huh. You know them, right? Mm -hmm. So let's listen to what this guy said. He said some things, right? Let's see if I can find the vocabularies to actually break it down, and then we get to we, we get to hear what he said again. <laughs> Yes, exactly. Tariq Ayub, yes. They probably have their own fake gender. They've created their own gender that they will be going to. So I, 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 I cannot phantom their madness. Seriously. Okay, let's check. Brother and sister, let me ask you guys a question, right? If one now decided to have a zina with his mother. He says, brothers and sisters, let me ask you a question. If one decides to have zina, that which is fornication with his mother. So the word zina can be attributed to fornication and adultery, right? 
If somebody is married and goes to sleep with somebody else, it's called adultery. The same zina, the word zina. If somebody is not married and goes to sleep with somebody without, you know, the 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 rights of marriage, that is also zina. So zina, zina, right? Okay. So this zina, this guy says, let's say somebody goes to have zina with his mother. Let's go for it. And after having zina, he comes to realization that he has impregnated her. So, and after having the zina with her, he comes to the realization that he has impregnated his mother, which is an incest, right? He has impregnated his mother. So now listen. Impregnated her. Doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop there. Don't, don't think the story stops there. I'm surprised there was no nasheed. Be behind this video i was surprised you know uh even though he's what he said was was, was re extremely crazy but there was no nasheed i was surprised you know and i, I didn't want to put the nasheed myself so, so <laughs> let's allow them <laughs> so he says he doesn't stop there right so check what he's going to say he takes her life and then buries her in a place so this same person, after having the zina with his mother, he impregnated her. He doesn't stop there. He takes her life away by killing her, and he buries her in a place. Now listen. That nobody knows about. That nobody knows about. Ladies and gentlemen, embrace yourself for the impact of the madness Abu Taymiyyah is going to throw at us right now. <laughs> these are sunnis uh, sunnis su, sun, sunnis sunnis uh, so be careful if you are next to a sunni next to you be careful always these people are extreme in the head kaput so be careful so this guy he said let's say somebody is living with the mother and then he, he sleeps with the mother that is number one madness and he impregnates the mother. That is number two, madness. After impregnating her, he kills her. He slaughters her. That is number three, madness. And then he himself buries her again. That is number four, madness. And nobody knows about it. That is number five, madness. Let's go. This is the first scenario. Yeah. So that is the first scenario. He's going to draw a contrast, comparison, right? So he's telling you this person with the five criteria is going to be compared to another person. So let's check which other person is going to be compared with. I have someone who used to look after his mother. Then the second scenario is you have somebody who used to look after his mother, right? And he's going to tell you all these qualities of this. Huh? Oh, he would massage her feet. He will even go to the extent, after looking after his mother, he will massage the feet of his mother. Every single night. Every single night. Okay? Let's assume there's somebody who can do that. Every single night. He was someone who would pray in the night. and then... He was someone who will pray in the night and then fast in the... Fast in the day. However... In the day. He will pray in the night and fast in the day. Remember, he started by taking care of his mother, massaging her feet... Yeah every night and then he prays in the night and fast in the day so we, you can see the the qualities of piousness huh okay when he went to al medina he made dua to the messenger sallallahu alaihi just once so now this person went to medina he made dua to the prophet just once listen carefully the 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 all these hibijibis he's speaking about, he's going to base the all these issues on the prophet. He's going to make it as if the prophet is the decisive part of the dean. And this is what he's going to do. So you check what he's going to do. Oh, messenger of Allah, I'm going through all of these. So he says this person goes to the grave of the messenger he goes to Medina, he goes to, so he's going to uh, the messenger and tell the messenger his problem. So just, he says, listen. Once, oh messenger of Allah, I'm going through all of these difficulties, please. 
ask Allah Azza wa Jal to help me. So he says, he goes to the messenger and say, oh, messenger, I'm going through all this difficulty. Please ask God to help me. Now, what you are checking here, going on here from this video is that these people, that they have created a parallel religion, a different religion altogether, which is different from the Islam of the Quran. The second Islam they created is based on Hadith books and the prophet of the Hadith books, not the prophet of the Quran, right? Uh -huh. That prophet of the Hadith books, they claim he was bewitched. Somebody cast a spell on him and this prophet slept with his wife with 11 women in one night. He had concubines and he, he married a CCSO girl. And this same prophet is, uh, you know, you know, he kills people. He, you know, a lot, a lot of things. And he, he, he passes on legislations which are not from God, his own independent legislations. So this is the prophet from the Hadith, right? So this is the prophet, the same prophet he's talking about, not the prophet of the Quran. But listen carefully, because I want to help people to know how to differentiate between the two. They are not the same. So now listen. He's making dua to the Prophet So he says this person is making dua to the Prophet. Right? Uh -huh. Or he's using the Messenger of Allah as an intermediary to Allah. Now this person is using the Messenger of God as the intermediary, that a mediator in between, to stand in between, you know. Allahu Jalla fi ula. Which one's worse? The now, after making, drawing this contrast, he's asking us, uh, I won't say us, he's asking his audience, the mushriks along with him, which one is worse? Which, which of the, these two he mentioned, the criteria, which one is worse? The first one is somebody living with his mother, and then he had incest with the mother, and he actually impregnated the mother, and then he ended up killing the mother, and he ended up burying the mother and letting nobody know about him killing the mother. That is number one. Number two, it's somebody who is with the mother, who takes care of his mother, who massages the feet of his mother every night, who fasts during the daytime, who prays every night time, who actually goes to the uh, the, 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 the messenger, that is the grave, and pray to the messenger that he should make dua for him so that, you know, God will, you know, huh. so now check the contrast. First or the second? Second. So he says the first or the second. Then he says this man, he impregnated his own mother and then killed her. Now he's drawing the contrast. So check who is he, he is going to choose among the two, right? This man, he impregnated his own mother and then killed her. And then he buried her in a location that nobody knows about. This person is better than the second who used to pray in the night and massage the feet of his mother? Yes. <laughs> what? Ah. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. What? Antibrofo. Antibrofo. Guys. Yeah, as we allow anyone with you. The guy's name is Abu Taymiyyah. Seriously. Like, like seriously. Allah guy and deserve Mari. Mari will say, but bad, big slap. He deserve it. Wallahi lazim. As with Allah, what he will work in. Eh! Hmm. <laughs> hey.
<laughs> Do me a favor, please. Get out of here. Get out of here, man. Shit, I'm saying. Guys. <laughs> hmm. When God says that people are just like livestock, you think God was joking, right? Quran chapter 25, verse 44. It says, do you think that most of the people listen or reason? Then he says they are just like livestock. Quran chapter 25, verse 44. And these are the livestock among people. I'm serious. I'm serious. And this person happens to be working freely in UK. Yeah. And this guy will go to the masajids, who have institutions, platforms, where he's preaching these nonsensical things to the people. And they think, MashaAllah, MashaAllah, Sahih, he is follow Sahih Bukhari. Yeah, he's our Imam, he's Sunni, Sunni Imam. Yeah, MashaAllah. You wait for the madness. It's coming to your nearby houses. <laughs> hey! Mm, let me repeat that part. Listen carefully. The second, second, this man, he impregnated his own mother and then killed her. And then he buried her in a location that nobody knows about. This person is better than the second who used to pray in the night and massage the feet of his mother? Yes. How? Ha no. How? Now he's going to tell you the reason why he said yes. That, that is even the worst case scenario. Now listen. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, if the second individual who prays in the night and fasts in the day and he massages the feet of his mother, passes away, just having made dua once to the Prophet wasallam, this person is 110 times worse than the first individual. <laughs> <laughs> so listen to the what he said he said the person who actually fasts in the day massages the feet of his mom and and, and prays every night and do everything for his mom he never mentioned look then he says this person prays invokes the prophet that the prophet should make duha on behalf of him listen he invoked the prophet and said the prophet should make a dua on behalf of him so that god will forgive him according to this guy he says the first one who actually slept with his mother impregnated his mother killed his mother buried his mother and made it unknown to anybody this person who did these five worst things is better than the first person who was taking care of his mother, massaging the feet of his mother every night. He fasts every daytime. He prays every night. But then he invoked the prophet that the prophet should pray on behalf of him, that God should forgive him. This guy, Abu Taymiyyah, he says the first person we mentioned who killed his mother, who, who slept with his mother and did everything, is better than the second one who did all these things. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> and we 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 have people seriously listening to this kind of uh, people now let me tell you the the discrepancy in his statement ladies and gentlemen 
when we say to invoke, let me tell you how invoke, what invoke means. Invoke, it means to summon into action or bring it to existence, often as if by magic. That is number one. Number two, cite as an authority, resort to. Number three, request earnestly, ask for aid or protection. Okay. Invoking can mean also you are calling on somebody. Now, let me tell you the madness in what this guy said. Have you noticed that all the Sunnis, all the Sunnis, all the sectarians, when they pray their salats, whoever watched my last week lecture, my last week lecture, when I did the lecture on Omar Suleiman, Umar Suleiman, kindly watch that lecture. Is concerning the Salat al Nabi. These people, they invoke the Prophet even in their Salat. Day in, day out. They invoke. Maybe they don't understand the meaning of invoke. Wallahi lazim. All the sectarians around you, they invoke the Prophet in their Salat. Do you want to know how? Let me show you. They will say, Atayatu lillahi wa salawatu wa tayyibat assalamu alayka ayyuha nabiyyu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu So they will say Atayatu lillahi greetings to God wa salawat wa tayyibat with the salawat and the tayyibat meaning my prayers and uh, the good deeds all goes to God Then they say assalamu alayka Peace be upon you. You cannot tell God, peace be upon you, right? Okay, so who are they telling peace be upon you? Assalamu alaikum. They are invoking somebody who is dead, a dead man, remember? So then they say, Assalamu alaikum. Are you a Nabi? Peace be upon you, O oh, you, the prophet. Wa rahmatullahi and the mercy of God. What? Yeah, Muslim, Mushrikanga. You understand? Assalamu alaika. Are you a Nabi? They are talking to the Prophet literally in their salat. I just told you just last week, Umar Suleiman, when he said, When you send salam to the Prophet, the angel goes to the Prophet and tells the Prophet that Mobili sends salam to you. Or Akrika. Or somebody with the worst difficult name ever on earth. The angel will now relate that message to the prophet in his grave. And tell the prophet, hey, Mubile uh, from South Africa says salam to you. Uh, 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 how do you, how do you, what is the difficult name I can even mention? Huh? And this one, he said the prophet will respond by mentioning your name. Seriously. <laughs> Look, when Koreshina officer is telling you to scrutinize these scholars and check their their brain, their IQ, you think you think they are sound people walking on earth? No, they are not. I'm serious. Regardless of how the eloquence they have in their speech, how they address, how they appear, ladies and gentlemen, wallahi lazim. Take a second look at them. Examine them very critically. Yes, uh, thank you, Brother Enes, for the gift. Examine them critically. I'm serious. Do you know fools can appear handsome and smart as well sometimes? A foolish person can appear like that also. Do you know that? That is the irony. When I'm playing this video of Abu Taymiyyah, I'm trying to show you the contradiction in the things they preach to people. He is trying to advocate that the first person, uh, the first person who killed his mother, who slept with his mother, listen, who killed his mother, who slept with his mother, who uh, actually buried his mother by himself and made it unknown to nobody, 
this person is better than somebody who does all the good things, but he invoked the prophet. Then what are you, the Sunnis, doing? Don't you invoke the prophet? Do they understand the meaning of invoke or invocation? Do they understand the meaning of that? You guys literally talk to the prophet in everything you do. I'm serious. It gets to a, a point, a sectarian will tell you, if you pray to God, you don't add the name of the prophet, your prayers will not be answered, just like the Christians do. They will say you have to say in the name of Jesus before your prayer will be answered. So then Jesus, when Jesus prays, in whose name does he add? Okay, Muhammad, when he prays, in his, whose name does he add before the prayers? Does he say in the name of Ibrahim, God, give me? What? So common sense is out of religion. You see, do you see the problem? Common sense is out of religion. They don't want you to use your IQ anymore. Your brain, no. So do you see the mushriks? Because the things they tell you, you don't, you don't examine. You don't scrutinize them. You don't fact check them. You don't cross check and ask the relevant questions. Now, these people will now invoke the prophet. Wallahi, wallahi, sectarians invoke the prophet. Unless, look, you are the biggest fool. If you tell me what you do to the prophet, it's not an invocation. Wallahi, lazim. I dare you, I'll open the phone lines. I dare you, any mushrik, you call me. Let's examine. And then come and prove to me. In the book of God, where God asks you to call the prophet in your salat. If not, you are fooling yourselves. Wallahi, you are fooling yourselves. Quran chapter 2 verse 130. Who would desire other than the creed of Abraham, if not one who fools himself? Automatically, if you belong to any creed, which is not the millat Ibrahima, and you call yourself Ali Sunnah, Shia, Tijadiya, Kadiriya, Ahmadiya, Salafiya, Wahhabiya, Wallahi. Not me saying it. According to God, you are fooling yourself. Yes, I will tell you to your face whether you like it or not. According to God, you are fooling yourself because you guys claim you don't follow the middle of Ibrahim. Yes, Quran chapter 3 verse 95, God is telling you to follow the creed of Abraham. God is telling the messenger to tell you, the mushriks especially, to follow the middle of Ibrahim. You said, no, no, Akhi, no. Sunnatul Rasulullah, Sunnatul Nabi. Come and prove to me in the Quran where he says Sunnatul Nabi. I dare anybody, any mushrik. Prove to me in the Quran where he says Sunnatul Nabi or Sunnatul Muhammad. I dare you. Wallahi lazim. I dare you. I'll put my phone number. Come. Let's continue with the mushrik. Just having made dua once to the Prophet وسلم, this person is 110 times worse than the first individual. Inna he says, this person who make the dua to the Prophet that the Prophet should pray on his behalf so that God will forgive him. He says, this person is 110 times worse. Based on which calculation? Based on which scale? Where? Where, where does he say that? 110 times? Then it means all you, the mushrik sectarians, you are going to hell. Because this is what the guy is telling you. <laughs> Abu Taymiyyah is preaching against you, the mushrik again. You are all going to hell. Because he is literally telling you, all you sectarians, you are 110 times worse than somebody who, who, who slept with his mother, impregnated his mother, killed his mother, buried his mother, and made it unknown to anybody. This guy is saying, you the guys calling Muhammad in your salat. I'm serious. Like, when they speak, they don't listen to themselves. No, they don't. <laughs> I'm serious. They, they, they don't listen to themselves.
لا يغفر أن يشرك به إذا إن الله لا يغفر أن يشرك به He says indeed God does not forgive when you associate you idolize others with him. Now what do these mushriks do? Don't they idolize Prophet Muhammad next to God? No seriously, don't you idolize Prophet Muhammad next to God? Then why do you do salat al nabi day in day out in the morning in the evening in the night in the toilet in the bathroom in the shower when you are going to make your sunnah with your wife you mention it sectarians will literally tell you you have to do salat al nabi in everything you think i'm lying check my last week program go and watch my last week program concerning umar suleiman the video i will be trimming the video to put on youtube very soon wallahi Wallahi, these people are kaput in the head. And you think they are, speak, they are, they are sp speaking words of wisdom? Hey! Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not forgive shirk if you die upon it. You hear mushriks, sunnis, you hear? He, the Mushrik, again, he's telling you the same thing you, he, and you all do together. If you die in your shirk, God will never forgive you. And according to this guy, he's telling you that somebody who slept with his mother, killed his mother, impregnated his mother, buried his mother, is better than you, the Mushriks, the Sunnis, <laughs> the Shias. Uh -huh. If you die upon shirk, brothers and sisters, you are not coming out of the hellfire. You see? He's telling you because according to your hadith, you are, they are going to take you out of the hellfire because you had some iota of faith. So according to your hadith books, they are going to take you out of hell and put you to paradise. Now this guy is totally sealing the gate and saying, if you die based on shirk, you are not coming out of hellfire. But still you are mushriks, the Sunnis. And the, the sectarians, you are mushriks for to, to, to be honest. <laughs> As Allah clearly and explicitly told us twice in the Quran. Okay. So he says, As yeah, yeah, it's just like Christianity, yes. You know, as God told you twice that he doesn't forgive idol worship. Right? Mm -hmm. Idol worship is totally out of coverage here. He even told the Prophet Muhammad himself, peace be upon him, Quran chapter 39 verse... Let me put it on the screen. Quran chapter 39 verse 65. I put it on the screen. I think last week when I did a program, I, quote, I quoted this verse again. So God says in Quran chapter 39 verse 65, وَلَكَدْ min kablika. لَإِنْ أَشْرَكْتَ لَيَعْبَتَنَّا أَمَلُكَ وَلَتَكُنَّنَّا مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ And it has certainly been inspired to you, Muhammad, peace be upon him, and to those before you, that if you associate others, that is to idolize, your work will become worthless, and you will be among the losers. So my question to the mushriks, the Sunnis, when the prophet is praying, in his salat, does he invoke anybody along with God? Does he do that? Because Quran chapter 72, verse 18, Surah Al Jin. Now, in Surah Al Jin, chapter 72, after you read verse 18, I'm going to show you something. <clears throat> in chapter 72, verse 18, he says, Right? Aha, he says, and the masjid, masajids, the mosques, belong to God. So do not invoke anyone along with God. Do not. So now, when you continue to verse 19, wa anna hulama kama Abdullahi yadu uhu kadu yakununa alayhi libada, and that when the servant of God got up to invoke him they almost became a compacted mass against him now check what the messenger was asked to say verse 20 kul inna ma adu rabbi wala ushiruku bihi ahada 
That is what Prophet Muhammad himself said. He, he the messenger. He was asked to say, Kul, innama adu'u rabbi wala yushiruku bihi ahada. Say, I, I, I only invoke my Lord and do not associate or idolize anyone with him. So this is Prophet Muhammad speaking here. But you see a foolish mushrik telling you he has to call Prophet Muhammad in his own salat. This is your role model. Does he call anybody in his salat when he's invoking God? The answer is no. So how come you, out of your foolishness and your indoctrinations that your scholars have given you, you now sit in your salat and you say, As-salamu alayka, ayu wa nabiyu. Out of your foolishness, are you not the same people saying that the Prophet said, Sallu kamara aytumuni usalli? Ah. Oh, you forgot you told us that, the mushriks. In your hadith books, you said the Prophet said you should pray as you have seen him pray. So my question to you, the mushriks, is, listen carefully. My question to you, the mushriks, is, if you say in your hadith books that the prophet says, Sallu kamara aytumuni usalli. Do you see the foolishness? The prophet never called invoke on anyone along with God in his salat. So how come you in your salat, you are now calling the prophet, Assalamu alayka, ayu wa nabiyu, wa rahmatullahi, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, wa ala ali Muhammad. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, Sallu kamara aytumuni usalli, according to your hadith books. Did the prophet do the same? Hello. Hello. Can you see me? Hello. Do you see me? Look at me. Do you see me? Uh huh. According to you, you said the prophet says, Sallu kamara aitumuni usalli. Ah, as you have seen him pray, right? Okay, so he came in the salat and he said, Assalamu alayka ayyuad nabiyu. So which? Which Nabi was he talking to? Oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. So Muhammad was sitting in the salat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama salaita wa rahimta wa barakta ala... Hey, mushrikanga. <laughs> you, you, the mushrik is, the shirk is sweeting you. You go and meet God. This is your own so-called uh, tabligh or uh, scholars or whatever, the, the da'i, you call them the da'i, you have Arabized everything. Arabized everything. Okay, the da'i, you don't want to call them the, the, the inviters or da, you, you call it the da'wa guys. Da'wa, okay. So this da'i, he's sitting there telling you, if you do shirk, all your work is worthless. God will never forgive you. But you are still doing the shirk in your salat. And it is with you. When Baba Shrab is speaking, you are agitated. You said, I'm a madman. Why are you infuriated when I speak? No, let's be honest. You said Baba Shrab is a madman. But why are you angry? Because the last time I checked, if a madman speaks, you shouldn't be angry. You should be laughing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but you are infuriated. Mm, there's something wrong. They are infuriated by what I say. And they say, I'm a madman. But yet they are angry. Or is it just the truth you hate? Quran chapter 43 verse 78. We have brought you the truth, but most of you hate the truth. Have you thought of that? Sit down and think. Reflect. Think deeply. Ask yourself a deeper question. I'm serious. I'm only trying to wake up your dead ass. That's all I'm trying to do. Because the scholars have already finished you. I'm serious. Especially... Some of the kubalos, which the scholars were weeping in the madrasas, in, especially in Africa, they whip them after paying your tuition, your fees. Even with, regardless of pay, you paying the fees, they whip you very well. And you drop out of Makaranta, the madrasa. And Baba Shrib is speaking, you hate me because I'm telling you the truth. The bitter truth is better than sugar-coated lies. So then, on the day of judgment, this is, <clears throat> this is what God is telling the prophet. Quran chapter 16, verse 89. Listen what God says. 
<coughs> so God says Wayawma nab'athu fi kulli ummatin shahida alayhim then he says min anfusihim then he says wajina bika shahidan ala haula'i then he says wa nazzalna alayka alkitaba tibiyana li kulli shay'in there is no illa the foolish mushriks will put illa here I'm coming to you the the local the local champions the local scholars you see they will put illa there is no illa wa nazzalna alayka alkitaba tibiyana li kulli shay'in then he says what wa hudan wa rahmatan wa bushra lil muslimin now listen carefully the ali sunna people will say no 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 am bayyana shi adunkule <laughs> for those who speak hausa you know what i'm saying so let's go over the verse and the day we will raise among every nation a witness against them from themselves and we will bring you muhammad as a witness against these his own people wallahi lazim prophet muhammad doesn't know you you right now you you the 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 kutukuli the chamba the 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 gumba the the kada kado uh, the hausawa the prophet muhammad doesn't know you anywhere he's a messenger to his own people he doesn't know you 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 sit there and you say you come and say ana laha ana laha you let this garbage books lie to you allah you you are joking so god will bring him as a witness to his own people you can never be a witness to people you have not seen and heard before wallahi is is impossible for you to be a witness against people you have never seen or witness what they did or heard what they did wallahi only god can be a witness to such every event prophet muhammad can never be your witness he doesn't know you you think i'm joking go and read chapter 39 verse 71 72 to 73 go and read and see chapter 39 verse 71 72 to 73 go and check and see it is only a messenger who has lived with you who has seen you can testify for you or against you the one who has not seen you is impossible i'm going to prove to you right now from the quran you see it and the day we will raise among every nation a witness so that is why every nation will have their own witness they have their own messengers against them from themselves prophet muhammad is not among from you he he had his own people in his own timeline wallahi lazim look if you don't understand what i'm saying let me help you with a verse from the quran i'll come back to this verse right so let me help you with with a verse from the quran here if you read quran chapter 2 verse 134 let me show you how god is just every messenger has his own umma stop listening to the confused scholars telling you you are the umma of muhammad he doesn't know you anywhere wallahi muhammad doesn't know you he had his own people only a messenger who has seen you witness what you did heard what you did can bear witness for you okay god says tilka ummatu kad khalat laha ma kasabt eh, kasabat wa lakum ma kasabtum a ah, kasabtum then he says wala wala tusaluna tusaluna amma kanu ya'malun then god says that was a nation which had already passed it will have what its end and you will have what you have end and you will not be questioned about what they used to do you don't study and you let this comedian celebrity scholars keep fooling you just like that for free 
And because you watch, you see them on social media, you think they are guided. And they appear handsome, mufti men, looking like an angel. You say, mashallah, this guy, you say he looks like somebody from paradise. Yeah, really. <laughs> God is telling you in Quran chapter 2, verse 134, that was a nation. He was narrating the stories of Abraham and so on and so on. After he finished, he says, that was an ummah which had already passed. It will have what it end. And you people, that in this verse, in the context, it was talking to the believers, the Muhammad and the believers at that time. And you will have what you have earned. And you will not be questioned about what they, they used to do. And then you expect Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to be questioned about you when he doesn't know you. He is being told about Prophet Ibrahim, Ishmael, Ishaq. That he, look, you will not be questioned about what they did. Why will now God will question us concerning Muhammad or God question Muhammad concerning you? Does he know you? Hello, does he know you? Let's go back. Quran chapter 16, verse 89. And the day we will raise among every nation a witness against them from themselves. And we will bring you, Muhammad, peace be upon you, as a witness against these, his own people. How will I eat? Then he says, and we have revealed the book to you, Muhammad, as a clarification, as an elucidation, as an exposition, as a, as a you mentioned, explanation. You Put put any word you know that me that fits to be an, as a declaration, as a, you me, you mentioned them. Tibian. It comes from the word bayana, ah, huh? Okay, now here for all things, but for who? Not for everybody, not for the mushrik, because the mushrik, the Quran doesn't clarify everything. They will tell you, Ahi, where is five salat? Ahi, where, where does he say two rakat, three rakat? Ahi, how does he, where does he show you how to sleep with your wife? Ahi, ahi, okay, where does he show you how to name your child? You sit there, don't give your... <laughs> Allah, we should get the... I don't want you. <laughs> the Muslims will be asking you the dumbest questions ever. <laughs> hey, Libani, brother, I see you. <laughs> <laughs> if you are looking for the dumbest questions on earth, you wait for mushriks. Especially Baba Shaib, when they see me, how do you pray? <laughs> how do you pray your salat? How many rakats do you do? It's a computer program. You know computer, when you start the Windows 98, it made the sound the way it starts. That's how mushriks have been programmed. And they think they have the biggest questions ever when they're asking a question. <laughs> Baba Shaib will open the phone lines. Come and ask me, how do you pray? We will start with you first. You will make sure you prove to us how you pray. Since you have been doing it for all your life. <laughs> you say Baba Shaib is bringing a new religion. Out of your foolishness, you don't study the Quran to see the religion God has given you. You follow, uh, yes, and somebody just wrote me. They will ask you, how do you do Istinja? Istinja. They will mention Istinja. And then they will, they will mention uh, they have a lot of things they will mention to you. Mushriks, that's how they've been programmed. And they get this foolishness from their scholars. Okay, don't worry. Baba Shah will open the phone line and I'll be on TikTok. Come, I'm waiting for you, Mushriks. <laughs> it's the correctional officers then. For you, Sunni especially. Mm -hmm. So, let's continue. So then God says, as a clarification for all things, and as guidance and mercy and good news for who not for the mushriks not for the mushriks for who for the muslimin for the muslims submitters those, those who submit to god like us because they hate us they will call us the quranist the Qurani yun because they hate us so they want us to become sex like them we are submitters to god thank you very much uh, uh sinan suleiman we are submitters to God. 
So we said the Quran is a clarification for all things. We said the Quran is a guidance. We said there is mercy. So when you open the book, you find all this in the book, Al-Kitab. God has given us. Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. It's sufficient for us. We are okay with that. But the, the other group, the other party, the one who said, we said we are going to follow the Quran alone, so that means we are kafirs. Like, let it make sense to me. How am I following the book, the book of God? I'm following it. And I say it is enough for me. And still you said, I'm a kafir of the Quran. Let it make sense. Okay. So we see, because of this, God has given the messenger a book, which is a clarification for all things, right? So then God will bring him as a witness against his own people. But it doesn't stop there. Let's continue. Now I take you to Quran chapter 4, verse 41. In Quran chapter 4, verse 41, this is what God says. God says, وَكَيْفَ إِذَا جِئِنَا مِنْ كُلِّ أُمَّةِ بِشَهِيدًا بشهيد وجينا بك على هؤلاء شهيدا. God says, so how will it be when we bring a witness from every nation? So every ummah will have a witness. Every ummah, even including today, you will have a witness among you. Baba Shuaib, I can witness you the mushriks. So, hey, don't think you the mushriks of today. Prophet Muhammad was here to see you or the messenger was here to see you. Baba Shuaib, me, I can see you. What you the, the mushriks. The Mufti Mengs, the Asim Al Hakim, the Numan Ali, you the Mushriks. I can see what you do clearly. So if God, Wallahi, if God brings me as a witness against you, the Mushriks, I will testify. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said these guys hate us, so they call us Qurani, you, and they call us Quranists because we follow the book of God. So I'm going to show you from the book of God who is the foolish one. Mm. So God says, so how will it be when we bring a witness from every nation and bring you, Muhammad, as a witness against these? Ha'ulai means these people, your people. And I'm going to break it down so that you understand it is against his people. He doesn't know you. Okay. So now, the next one, God is talking about Quran chapter 7, verse 6 to verse 7. Now listen to what God says. Quran chapter 7 verse 6 to verse 7. Falannas alanna lazina ursila ilayhim. Then he says, walannas alanna mursaleen. God says, therefore we will question those to whom it was sent. And we will question the messengers. This is the promise of God on the day of judgment. He will question the people the messenger was sent to them. And he will question the messengers he sent to the people. Wallahi. This is what God is telling the messenger in the Quran. Okay, still the mushriks don't see all these things. Now we go to Quran chapter 43, verse 43 to verse 44. Now listen to what God says. First, tamsik bilazi uhiya then he says, Innaka ala siratin mustaqim. So adhere to what has been inspired to you. Indeed, you, Muhammad, are upon a straight path. Then God says, Wa innahu la zikrun laka wa li kawmika. Then he says, Wa sawfa tusalu. Yes, wa sawfa tusalun. So God says, indeed, it is a remembrance for you, Muhammad, and for your people. No, you. You. Are you the people of Muhammad? Does he know you? Do you understand when we say kawmuka or kawmika? Do you understand? You are not the people of Muhammad, especially, especially you from Nigeria and Ghana. Where does Muhammad know you? No, seriously. Where does he know you from? Huh? Okay. And God says, and you will be questioned. You and your people, Muhammad, you'll be questioned. Okay. So now we can see how God is establishing the truth step by step. The messengers will be questioned. Those to whom it was sent will be questioned. And now he's re-emphasizing the statement by telling Muhammad, you'll be questioned. Okay, no problem. Now we go to Quran chapter 39. 
verse 30 to 31. Listening to what God told Muhammad, peace be upon him. Innaka mayyitu wa innahum mayyitun. God says, indeed, you, Muhammad, you will die. And he's already dead. Where is he? He's dead. But still, the mushrik says, when you send your salam, the, uh, the angel will tell him, hey, Prophet Muhammad, Mubili from South Africa, he said salam to you. And then he says, the prophet will respond. So the prophet will say, Mubili, I'm so also sending salam back to you. <laughs> Imagine the billions of mushriks all over the world. Umar Suleiman says, they are all sending the blessings to the prophet and he's responding to everybody by name and the mushriks believe in this okay indeed you muhammad will die and indeed they your people will die where are they they are not no more the people muhammad lived with they are no more where is prophet muhammad he is dead he himself where is he so now let's go and see what god is going to tell us muhammad and his people listening to what god is going to tell you concerning muhammad and his people then God says, Thumma innakum yawmal kiyamati inda rabbikum takhtasimun. God says, then indeed you will quarrel before your Lord or at your Lord on the day of resurrection. Ah, the Quran is sweet, Papa. <laughs> hey, <laughs> let me drink water. <laughs> you come and say he will say analaha analaha okay this is god telling you what muhammad and his people will do so god says then indeed you muhammad will you and your people will quarrel before your lord or at your lord on the day of resurrection do you know what will cause the quarreling the quarrel i'll tell you i'm going to give you the answer just relax. Thank you very much, Boya Konguman. I'm going to give you the answer. Re relax. God is telling you, Muhammad and his people are going to quarrel on the day of judgment. You are a fool if you say it is not the truth. This is what God is telling you. But because your garbage book says something else, you think that is the truth, right? Okay, no problem. Let's check the Quran. So you, he, God is telling him what is going to happen. Right? It's just like when you, before a movie comes out, you see the trailer, right? The trailer already gives you a certain incident that you see that this is about to happen. You're going to see it in the reality when you go to the cinema. Okay, so now keep your fingers crossed. Now I'm taking you to Quran chapter 25, verse 30. This is where the quarreling is going to happen. Chapter 25, verse 30. Then God says, the messenger will say, وَقَالَ رَسُولُ يَا رَبِّي إِنَّ كَوْمِ تَخَزُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَحَجُورًا The prophet, the messenger will say, and the messenger will say, Oh Lord, indeed, my people have taken this Quran as abandoned on the day of judgment. This is what he will tell God. My people have taken this Quran as abandoned ladies and gentlemen right now in this modern day and age which are the groups that you can see clearly that have abandoned the quran that has abandoned the quran is it not the sunnis the shias the you mentioned them the sectarians the ones who mock us and say quranist qurani yun we are being proud of the book of god they are mocking us and they are insulting us they say we are kafirs they say they are enemies of Islam. They are enemies of the Quran. They are enemies of God. They are enemies of the Prophet. Really? Really? The Prophet himself and his people, God says he is going to be a witness against his people. And God tell him, you are going to quarrel in front of God. Look. Look what God is saying. 25 verse 30. The messenger will say, oh Lord, indeed my people, who are his people? They know themselves. His people, the one he lives with them. The one you claim they left you, Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. Yes, yes. The ones you said they left you that book, those story books. The books which claim he married the CCSO girl, the enemies of the Prophet. That Those decoration, Zukhraf al Kawal al Gurura, Quran chapter 6, verse 112. They decorate the elusive statement for you, speech, speech, and you think you are guided. Those people, Prophet Muhammad as a messenger, is going to. Testify against his people. 
and you claim those people brought you guidance. Seriously? Ha. Hmm. So he said, my people abandoned the Quran. Yeah. You the guys claiming you are the Ummah of Muhammad. You the ones. He said he will testify against you if you say he's, he, you are a part of his Ummah. That Ummah you are going to see. You will see fire that day. So these people who have actually abandoned the Quran, this is what they do. The answer is in Quran chapter 33 verse 67. The ones who abandoned the Quran, this is the evidence. If you go to Quran chapter 33 verse 67, وَقَالُوا رَبَّنَا إِنَّ أَطَانَا سَادَتَنَا وَكُبَرَا أَنَا فَأَدَلُّونَا سَبِيلًا And they will say, O oh Lord, our Lord, indeed we, we obeyed our leaders and our elders, but they misled us from the way. Because you were supposed to follow the messenger. You didn't. The messenger brought the Quran. Look, let's start from the contest above. يَوْمَ تُكَلَّبُوا وُجُوهُمْ فِي النَّارِ uh, then he says, Yakuluna, Ya Laitana Atana Laha wa Atana Rasul. Says the day their faces will be rotated in the fire. They will say, Oh, if only we had obeyed God and obeyed the messenger. Because all the messenger needed to be obeyed with was the Quran. That is the book God gave him to bring. If you ask the mushriks, how many books did Prophet Muhammad bring? They will say one. Then they will say, Ahi. Then what is the problem? Then they say, but, but you need the sunnah. Ahi. You need the sunnah. <laughs> hey, mushriks. Hello, <clears throat> oh, Allah mushriks. <laughs> hey, mushrikanga. Hmm. The Quran is sweet too if you are whipping the mushriks with it. Okay. So, I'm tormenting the mushriks too much. Let me open my phone line for the mushriks. Okay, so that is my number below the page, right? Plus 358-466-803144, right? For those on TikTok, my number is plus 358 Four six six eight zero three one four four. You can call via WhatsApp. Let me see if I can connect it here. You can call via WhatsApp, then I will connect it, right? Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much, Imran. Imran uh, Khan, yes, thank you. Uh huh. Yes, uh, Sister Fatima Chinna, I see you. Salam. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is my number. Let the Sunnis call. I'm waiting. You know, Sunnis, I'll be coming to uh, TikTok very soon. I have less than one hour to come to, to TikTok, right? So tell the Sunnis, if they are here, they should get prepared. They shouldn't go away, please. Because normally when I come on TikTok, they will be running away. I don't like that. Today's program is Correctional Officers Den. You've been, you've been yabbing in the comment section. Typing is cheap. You say, Baba, should I be scared? Hey, answer me. Who are you? How do you pray? You, I'm coming. You wait for me on TikTok. I'm coming. Let's see. How do you pray? How do you pray? Repeat the question again. Uh, somebody say, Baba, is your Quran hard copy not in Ghana? Uh, the, the, I'll keep you posted. I'll keep you updated, inshallah. Just this year, I'll keep you posted. Right? You'll get a copy, right? Smile, uh, smile. I see you. Uh, I'll keep you updated, right? Imran Khan, yes. Um, I'll be working on that, inshallah. Right? Uh huh. Yes. So please, the the Sunnis, if you are here, this is your chance to face Baba Shrive, right? My phone number is on the page. Kindly call. The number is there. Call me. Call me. Prove me wrong in front of my audience, please. Uh, if you are a Sunni or you are a sectarian, every punchline I threw, if it's against you, please kindly call. Call and embarrass me, please. 
just call and embarrass me. I like embarrassment. Just embarrass me. Uh -huh. And uh, for those on TikTok, I'm, I'm coming there soon. So keep your fingers crossed. I'll be joining you soon. Uh, the number is there. Kindly call on WhatsApp. But for those who are there to the truth, that is the, those who follow the Quran, you are there to the truth. If you want to ask me a question, type in the comments. Just type in the comment section. If I happen to see your question, I'll address that. Uh, Eradicator says, brother, can you talk about Quran verse uh, 65 verse 4? Enemies of Islam use this verse together with the hadith of the marriage. Brother, to simplify this, I have a video on it. But to simplify this, if you want to get the full video, you go to my YouTube playlist. On YouTube, go to the playlist and look for the Mushrik's agenda. If you find the Mushrik's agenda, you will find that video where I have Muhammad Hijab's uh, picture on it. However, to give you the summary, when you start reading from chapter 65, uh, chapter 65, verse 1, start reading from verse 1 throughout the context up to verse 4. It doesn't mention any girl or young girl in that in those verses. It mentioned women, right? It mentioned women. You don't classify a, a CCSO girl un, under the group of women, or uh, under women, no. So those with the myopic mindset, those with the shallow mindset, they are the ones interpolating this nonsensical point of views, the mushriks, just like you saw Mohammed Hijab did. The mushriks, because they give credence to their garbage books over the Quran, right? So they brought this at pers uh, pers uh, perspective to the uh, op uh, opposition. And the opposition think, oh, it's true. Since Muhammad Hijab is popular and he said this, yeah, it could be true. The Quran says you can sleep with young kids. Where? I dare any mushrik to come and prove to me that. Or to prove to me where the prophet married the CCS girl in the Quran. I dare any mushrik. Uh -huh. <clears throat> uh -huh. So here, when you read Quran chapter 65, start from verse 1. Start looking for the word women. When you find the women, check the context throughout. The Quran is consistent with how it uses the subject, the context, the context and the content. of. Uh, uh, so the theme of the Quran is consistent. Right? You check the subject matter then you understand what Quran is discussing about. It's not about young girls. It's about women, right? So the women, the contest go throughout till verse 4 and then tells you for those who have not menstruated because we have women who's, who actually misses their menstruation even though they are not pregnant. And then we have women who have other, you know, uh, uh, you know medical issues. Uh -huh. So that is the condition God was given. It's not that he says, Lam yahidin. that means, oh, the who have never menstruated or is talking about kids. What, what is wrong with this perverted mindset of yours? Quran chapter 75, verse 16 to 19. Inna alayna jama'ahu wa Qur'anahu fa iza qara'anahu fa tabi'u Qur'ana thumma inna alayna bayanahu God says, do not hasten with your, do not move your tongue in order to hasten with the Quran. Huh? It's compilation of the Quran and its reading is based on God, not based on any Sahaba. Don't let any foolish mushrik tell you the Sahabas are the ones who compile the Quran. That is absolutely foolishness. God says, Inna alayna jama'ahu wa Quranahu. God never said, Inna alayka jama'ahu. He never said, You alaykum or alayka. It is God and his angels who have that duty to do. Just like you and I, the Quran got to us today. It is the book of God. God is never asleep. It will get to you, whether you live in uh, in a ghetto. The Quran will reach you. Right? Uh -huh. So don't let any foolish mushrik tell you, oh, it is the Sahaba who compiled the Quran. So it, are you telling me God is lying to me in Quran chapter 75, verse 17, when he said upon him is the uh, in the gathering? And the reading of it? Ah. Yes, Eradicator, thank you very much. You're welcome. Hey, Bilal, Jibril, I see you. Salam to you, bro. Uh, uh, 
Saddam C. Seke says, yes, I'm actually training a lot of people. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to open a private session where I'll be having for, with a small group discussion online. And also in, in where I'm based in Finland, I'll be organizing uh, programs where we can organize events where I can meet people. And then we, we go over all the topics or discussions, talk about everything from the Quran. So a lot of people can actually benefit from it. Right. And so this is why I fixed up a date like Wednesday. I'll be here for so many hours to enlighten people before I go away so that you you have enough to learn from. Right. Uh -huh. But yes, I'm teaching a lot of people who are actually benefiting from this. I would love to see people who will be trained and even become better than I am. <laughs> Wallahi lazim. I love that. Yes. Uh -huh. I don't mind teaching somebody to be better than me. I don't mind. <laughs> If you're better than me, I'll be I'll be resting. <laughs> I'll be resting and enjoying my cup of, you know, my cup of tea, watching you and enjoying also. I say, wow, look at who I trained. Wow. Yeah. It's good. For those who watch Jackie Chan and drinking master and so on, you saw uh -huh. his master teaches him to become a warrior. Yes. So the master will just sit down and enjoy his cup of tea. That's all I want. Uh, I would love to do that to teach people they become better than me and then the mushriks will be running away to the jungle <laughs> we drive all of them no more feasibility hey, uh -huh. ladies and gentlemen there is no such thing as zakat al-fitr in the Quran I repeat there is no such thing as zakat al-fitr in the Quran I repeat there is no such thing as zakat al-fitr in the Quran. That 2.5 tax they are charging you is not from God. When they say zakat al-fitr, they are talking about the zakat at the break of fast, meaning the end of fast, the breaking, fitr. Uh, just like they have Eid al-fitr. The Eid al-fitr is the Eid of the breaking the fast, right? So this fitr, zakat al-fitr, is not in the Quran. There is no such a verse in the Quran. It's not. There is no such verse in the Quran. So don't let them fool you and say Zakat al-Fitr is a must. You have to give us. You have to. Don't, they are taxing you. It's, that is not from God. Listen and listen carefully. Don't let them tax you. Okay. Uh -huh. Ladies and gentlemen, do you see the Bushriks, they don't call you. They don't call at all. You let Baba Shrib step down right now. When I step down, hey, you are running away. Answer my question. How do you pray? Hey, how do you pray? Hey. Baba Shrib is here. You call your, uh, 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 how, how will I say? Uh, Yeah, thank you very much, Mom. Uh, somebody with the name Mom. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, yes, OG, I see you. Thank you. Uh, somebody says, Sadiq Dangi says, uh, Brother, please, is there any verse in the Quran that states music is haram and also listen to music is haram? No, music is not haram. I have a, I have a lecture. I have a video on it, right? If you go to my live lectures playlist, uh, music is not haram. However, if you are a believer, you have to pay attention to Quran chapter 23, verse 3, right? In Quran chapter 23, verse 3, God tells you the criteria of believers. The believers, they avoid what is nonsense. Huh? So if you are a believer, try your best to avoid nonsense. So nonsense can be any music which is about vanity, which is about, you know, sex, which is about, you know, you know, mentioning stupid words like B, yes, excuse me to say the, you know, when they mention the B, B word and uh, avoid such songs. You can listen to a music which actually is conscious wise, which has a message. You can, you can even listen to romantic songs so far as they are not, you know, morally corrupt in terms of the choice of words. You can listen to conscious music, classic music, R&B. Yeah, li listen, music is never haram. Wallahi lazim. But however, you have to be careful with the choice of music you listen to. That I can advise you, right? Uh-huh. 
just like the food. Food is good, but you have to be careful which food you put in your belly. Quran chapter 2 verse 168. God says you should eat what is good and lawful and that don't follow the footsteps of the devil. The devil wants you to eat things that can cause you obesity, that can give you heart attack, that can give you stroke, that can give you a lot of, a lot of brain diseases and so on. So avoid music which can also corrupt you. Avoid it. Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. In my house, my with my kids, I don't play messed up songs, music. No. Aha. <laughs> uh -huh. Because then it will corrupt your kids. It will corrupt people around you. Yes. So you avoid bad type of music. Yes. But music entirely is not haram. Come on. Even the birds, they sing. Even the ocean, go, it's music to your ears. Are you should, are you saying we should ban, ban the, 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 the birds from singing in the morning? I know the mushriks, they can right now quote a verse and say, from their hadith and say, oh, it's haram for the birds to sing. They will say, if you see a bird singing, stone it. It's the devil. The devil is telling us to sing in your ears. The mushriks are like that. Absolutely. <laughs> Just like they tell you when you see a black cat and you see a black dog, that's the devil. Kill it. Kill it. Don't let it live. It's, it's bad. Uh -huh. They will tell you the same thing. <laughs> Can you imagine? They have one hadith where they are telling you to break musical instruments. The music, the brass and the trumpets, they say you break them. They are the objects of the devil. They are the equipment of the devil. Hey, this bushrik, they don't cease to amaze me. What lie? <laughs> they have all the nonsensical narrations on earth. They will give, they will keep giving you, and their imams will be shouting on the podium. Wallahi, brothers and sisters, if you don't kill a black dog, wallahi, the prophet say you are not going to paradise. Kill it, kill it. Hey, Nina, hey, Nino, mutakul, terver. Aha, so. You, these people, when you are listening to them, they are kaput in the head. Don't look. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> so tell the sectarians, please, if you know any sectarian, any Sunni, any the Shuyuks, tag them, tag them. Wallahi, they are scared to face me face to face. You tag them. Let them come. They are scared. They would be telling you, avoid that guy. He's crazy. He's crazy. But yet when I speak, they are offended. How can a crazy guy be speaking and you are offended? Have you have you seen a crazy guy talking and you are offended before? Huh? Mm -hmm. So tell them I'm online. This is the guy they say I'm misleading people. Tell them I'm here. And that guy, Prince Mushrik, tell him. I know maybe he's a teenager, so he might be sleepy. Tell him Baba Shrive is online. He should come here. Let's see if he has the balls to face Baba Shrive face to face. Tell the Mushriks Baba Shrive is online. My phone number is there. Let them call. Typing is cheap. I keep telling them. Typing is cheap. Typing is cheap. Typing is cheap. They think I'm running. Okay, I'm here. They look. Wallahi. The Mushriks, they know every Wednesday I do program. They know it too. Uh, you think they don't know? If you want to know, they know. Come to TikTok. Look for the guy called Midi. 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 The guy is always here when I'm doing a program. <laughs> every Wednesday. <laughs> They know very well, more than you, that I do programs on Wednesday. I'm waiting for them. Look, they are stall, They are making me stall here. Please, please, sectarians, if you are here, call. Please, I'm begging you in the name of God. It's Ramadan. You said the devil has been chained. It's closed. So I'm not the devil. As a matter of fact, thank God. Uh -huh. So you, according to you, the, the devil has been chained. Because in the comment section, some people, some of the sectarians, they are still calling me the devil. <laughs> they forgot we are in Ramadan. <laughs> they claim the devil has been chained. But somebody is on TikTok calling me the devil. I don't understand this. Whole. What is wrong with the Mushrik, say? Huh? How can you say the devil has been chained? And then you come on my page, correctional officer, and then you say, I am the devil. How? I don't understand. <laughs> They are scared, uh, brother Ismail or Ohiera. Ohiere, I see you long time, bro. They are scared. I don't know why they are not calling. The number is there. Look, there's the number on, on the page. They don't call. It is after the match has ended. <laughs> this guy, 
He doesn't have knowledge. I can face him. He doesn't know anything. Ha! This guy is this guy you call Baba Shai Kai. He doesn't know anything. I can face him. No problem. Baba Shai is here. Talking is cheap. Come. I'm here. Come. Call. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, yeah. Because I'm told some of them said I will make them famous. So they are scared. <laughs> they don't want to be famous. <laughs> I One time, there's a guy called, uh, is it Nuru or something, from Nigeria who called and I was talking to him. And he said, I said, can I see your face? Show me your video. video. He said, I'm in Nigeria and the place I am, there's no light. So he's trying to say there is darkness. So because there's darkness, we cannot see his face. <laughs> you forget that if you are using a phone, there's light on the phone. But he says there's no light. No problem. We forgive him. Mm. So please tell the sectarians, Baba Shrib is here. The phone number is plus three five eight four six six eight zero three one four four. Please. Please, I beg you, Sunnis, I beg you, Sunnis. The correctional officers then, I organize it because of you. Please, call me, please, and let's, let's talk. I will not embarrass you. I just want you to embarrass me. So please call. Please, please. Uh, please, I'm begging you, Sunnis, please. Somebody says, um, he says, Baba Shrab, there is a brother here who needs clarification regarding the Torah, the Zabur, the Injil, and how they were corrupted. Now, what you need to realize is the answer is in Quran chapter 2, verse 79, and Quran chapter 6, verse 91. In Quran chapter 2, verse 79, woe to those who write the book with their hands and say, this is from this is the book of God. This is from God, right? Now we are just there. People wrote book and then they call it Holy Bible. Throughout the Bible, you will never see a verse where God says He revealed a book called Holy Bible. It doesn't exist. Okay. The person calling should call again. Right? Where God says he revealed a book called Holy Bible. He never revealed any book called Holy Bible. No. No, 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 no. They formulated a new book. So what to those who write the books with their hands and say this is the what God has revealed? That is number one. So the real Torah, where is it? If they have it, why don't they use it for judgment? Do you understand? Now, the real Zabur, do, do they have it? If they have it, why don't they use for judgment? The Bible you have claiming that this is what the Quran talks about. Quran doesn't talk about a book called Bible. Quran never mentions a book called Bible. Because your Bible, we don't know which Bible you are talking about. Whether it's the one with the 66 books, whether with the one with the 80-something 80 books, whether it's the one King James Version, whether it's which one? Which Bible are you talking about? The Ethiopian Version? So which Bible? There is no book called Bible. Jesus never used a book called Bible. So if you are calling a book Bible, the Quran mentions Quran, and it talks about the book called Quran. So that's why we have the Quran. Do you see? The moment you are changing something from its original state, that is when we use the word corruption. But that doesn't mean when something is corrupted, you cannot get something from it. Do you get my point? Uh -huh. So, the, the duty of the Quran is to Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Hello. Hello. Hello.
Okay, this person is not talking. Kindly, kindly try calling again, right? Whoever called, kindly try calling again. On Facebook and YouTube, I only have 15 minutes to end the program, right? Uh -huh. I don't want the program to be very long. So kindly call. I'm waiting. Uh, Muhammad Gaddafi, chapter 10, verse 84. Let me see. Quran, chapter 10, verse 84. I can put it on the screen. Quran, chapter 10, verse 84. He says, and Moses said, oh, my people, if you have believed in God, then rely on him if you should be believers, if you should be submitters, Muslims. <laughs> Somebody called from US, he hung up. Somebody called from UK right now, also hung up. Please call, call. But if you if you are calling to just, since the Mushriks are not calling, if you want to just call to ask your own question, just ask before I bring the topic to an end. I'll be going to TikTok to tell the Mushriks to come there. Let's have the correction officers then there. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> Somebody say booty calls. <laughs> Terika, you. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, uh, Abdul Majid. Thank you. I appreciate you uh, Yunir Yasin. Yes. Somebody says, can you... Muta marriage, I have a video on it. Uh, I, I have a video. Muta, this Muta marriage is not from the Quran. It's, an, it's not a Quranic uh, type of marriage, right? It's just concorded from the Hadith books. So, away with the things they, they invent. I don't understand why, why the Sunnis are not calling. I don't know. When I'm not when I'm not on video, they go to the comment section always. Oh, you are scared. Answer my question. Answer my question. Please call, call. Tag tag all the mushriks you know. All the those the, the ones yabin. Yab, 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 yab. Uh -huh. Tell them Baba Shribe is online. Please tag them. Let them come. I'm here. Kindly tag them. Tell them Baba Shribe is online. For those on TikTok, I'll be coming there in, in 15 minutes' time. So if you want to talk to me on TikTok, wait. After 15 minutes, I'm coming there, right? But for those on Facebook and YouTube, I'm here. All the nonsensical typing. Typing is cheap. Keyboard warriors. Whenever Baba Shaib is not online, you come and type your gibberish. You think I have the time to waste to type back to you? Well, no problem. Baba Shribe is here. Use the same intellect to call me. Let's see. This person with the plus four four uh, from UK. You keep calling and hanging up. What is wrong?
These two people just called me a few minutes ago. I'm calling back, no answer. <clears throat> yes, hello. Yeah. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Your name and where yeah, you're calling from. Um, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. My name is Aruna Amadu. Aruna Amadu, okay. Yeah, yeah. God bless you, brother. Thank you, thank you, Aruna. Mm, for doing a good job. Thank you, Ar Aruna. Aruna. Thank you very much. I appre I appreciate that. You you gave you gave people false. I started hearing you, bro. Uh -huh. I can't get away from it. Anytime I hear, I see you online, I just want to join it. Yeah. Thank you, but thank you. I appreciate I want, that. Uh, my question is. Yeah. I want. Yeah, I want to know your opinion on Taruk Salak according to the Quran. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. When when they use the word tariku salat, it means the salat that you have left behind, that you left, yeah. so you are bringing it back. But there's no such thing as tariku salat in the Quran. It's not a concept you find in the Quran. As a matter of fact, when you are sleeping and then the salat passes you, there is no way you can pay back. It's gone. Okay, thank you very much. You understand? Uh -huh. When you are sleeping, and if somebody asks you where is the evidence, just ask the person the simple question. Quran chapter 18, verse 9 to verse 21. Listen carefully. Quran yeah, chapter I'm 18, listening. verse 9 to verse 21. The youth who slept in the cave for 309 years, in their age and time, there was a masjid, there was a mosque. They know God. According to the verses, they know God. They know who God is. So they didn't pray for 309 years. Ask any imam. Ask any sheikh. Listen. Those salats they missed for 309 years. How did they get it back? How did they have to get it back? Ask again, bro. <laughs> Do you understand? So God himself said in Quran chapter 4, verse 43, he says, do not approach the salat whilst you are intoxicated. So when we say sukara, it is not only when somebody drinks alcohol. When you are very tired and you feel like sleeping, we call it intoxication. You can be sitting down watching TV and then all of a sudden you are going. You are, you are sleeping. Now, those that sleeping you are doing, when you sleep for like one hour and you have, somebody wakes you up, you get in the mood, mood of intoxication. Like you start seeing everything different. If somebody says, different, yeah. get up, let's go. You, you get up, you don't even know where you are going. That is also yeah. intoxication. And also for people who drive, for people who are driving, sometimes you go to the pharmacy, they give you a pill. And then they tell you this medicine when you drink or you when you take it, don't drive. The reason is because it can cause intoxication. Do you understand? Uh -huh. So understand. intoxication can happen in many forms. It doesn't only have to do with alcohol or okay. wine. No. Uh -huh. So God says, do not approach the salat whilst you are intoxicated. So if you are intoxicated, avoid the salat. Okay. Because you have to so know what I you are saying. Know is yeah. Yes. What if maybe the morning salat, like you said, and you sleep away and forget about it and wake up around nine ten? Yeah, sometimes you what have to. You have to do. Yeah, no, it's gone. There's nothing you can do. If I have appointment okay. with you at one o'clock and you come at three o'clock, okay. where's the appointment? The appointment is gone. The appointment time is gone. Uh huh. So you just wait for the next one. But that okay. that will not you will not have a blame on you because you didn't do it intentionally because you slept. It's just sleeping. It's not like you are sitting down playing video game or at the market or playing somewhere and the salad pass you. No. You were sleeping. And sleeping, you don't control. Sometimes you can set alarm. Let me tell you emphatically. Sometimes you can set alarm. You want to wake up at one o'clock. Wallahi, but the alarm will pass. 
you never you never wake up ah uh-huh. so that is part of the intoxication when you are intoxicated it can pass you without actually realizing what happened so one time i sat on my computer i was going through the quran at that time i was i was doing uh, i was arranging a file from the quran whilst i was doing it i said let me put my head down a bit and guess what there was about one and a half hour left to fajr salat when i put my head i woke up four hours past already you understand so it shows how how tired i was my alarm couldn't even wake me up even wake you up yeah that is it. so in that instant it's not your fault you didn't do it intentionally it just happened to pass you so what you do it you try your best not to miss it at least getting the salat it makes you satisfied and it yeah, it yeah. brings you more closer to god so that is the point but when you miss it because of salat don't let any scholar tell you wallah you have to pay back you have to know salat is for your own good in al hasanat use hibn as sayyat you understand your your good deeds they wipe out your bad deeds so salat is just there for your own good it's not there for you god is saying hey if you don't do it you are going to hell that's a lie thank you very much you are welcome haruna thank but you i'm gonna call you personally in the house for that no no problem that is that is my number you said my number <laughs> first of all you can send me a voice message uh, I'll just listen in. Ha, she muy fira daga ba inshallah. Eh, of course, ni ma ni ma ma bo ni yaro ni mutu mi ko ni. She sa ko ya ke mung. Aha, okay, yeah, yeah, good, yeah, good. Okay, assalamualaikum. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so that is another brother. Fifty-two years old. Yes. Okay, so that is another brother from from Ghana. I think he's based in the USA. Uh, calling. Uh concerning this these are the things the scholars have lied to people for so many years concerning they will say tarku salat you miss the salat in the morning get up in the afternoon and do it where does it say that in the quran where come and show us where no where so if anybody tells you you miss the salat due to sleep and you have to make it up just simply ask them the youth who slept for 309 years in the cave are they going to hell A word to a wise is enough. If you let these scholars keep playing with your conscience, when God says "La ikara hafid din," katta bayyana rushdu min al gayi. Quran chapter two, verse two hundred and fifty-six. There is no compulsion in the din. Look, I repeat, there is nothing in Islam which is compulsory. There is nothing in Islam which is compulsory. When I say which is compulsory, God gives you option. There is nothing in Islam which is compulsory. Everything goes with an option. When something goes with an option, we don't say it is compulsory. Do you understand? If I tell you it is compulsory for everybody to use a white cap, it means there is no option for you to use black cap. That is what we call compulsory. If I say it is compulsory for all of you to do this way, that means everyone must do it this way. You understand? That is why your salat can be done when you are traveling. You can pray whilst you are walking or riding. You don't have to actually stand to pray. If it is compulsory, it means by force you have to stand to do as it is commanded. You understand? So when you are traveling, you can do zikr. We understand as a replacement, and that is found in Quran chapter two, verse two hundred and thirty-eight to two hundred and thirty-nine. That concept of salat is zikr. Ah, uh, you do the zikr of God because salat itself is for zikr Allah. Quran chapter twenty, verse fourteen. Inna ni Allah la ilaha illa ana fa abdini wa akimi salat li zikri. So salat is for the zikr of God, right? So if you are in a situation whereby you will not get the chance to stand to prostrate and do your salat then you can do whilst you are walking and whilst you are riding whether you near or in the aeroplane you can do that and for those who are telling you you have to face the the kaaba the qibla tell them when you are in the aeroplane and it's time for you to pray what do you have to do what do you have to face i guess you face the moon (laughs) 
Uh -huh. So tell the mushriks who keep telling you by force you have to face Kaaba to pray. <laughs> tell them if you are in the aeroplane, uh -huh, where are you going to face? Maybe you face the sun and the moon because there is Kaaba inside. They are foolishness. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I've done two hours. Uh, uh, okay, somebody is asking the last question. Let me tackle the last question here. Quran chapter 7, verse 172. When you read the context, it is telling you that before you came to the earth, before God brought you into existence to the world, you testified with God before coming. Right? Uh -huh. So we were with God before we came. Right? But as for the verse saying we saw God, no, it doesn't say we saw God, but it, we, we were with God and we testified before he brings that into existence to the world, right? Aha, uh -huh. so we testify that he is our Lord in Quran chapter 7, verse 172. So it means we know God already before coming to the earth. So somebody who says, if we know God, how come we forget? Because it is the fitra. And when we say fitra, this is this. Quran chapter 30, verse 30. In Quran chapter 30, verse 30, uh, just a minute. I'll call you back, brother. I'll call you back. Just a minute. Quran chapter 30, verse 30. This is what God says. He says, therefore, establish your aim. That is your face, your countenance, your attention to the Octodos religion. Such is the nature of God upon which he has originated mankind. Listen carefully. Such is the nature, fitrat Allah, which upon which he has originated fatoranas, mankind. There is no alteration to the creation of God. That is the valuable religion. So the, But most of the people do not know. So the fitra of God is, the first time you came to the earth, he established you based on you knowing that he is God. You know, but sometimes we happen to forget. So the reason why we forget, I'm going to explain to you why we forget. Uh, the human being is forgetful forgetful in nature. So I'm going to show you the reason why we forget. This is the last verse before I, I come to an end. I'll pick up the last caller before we go. So God says, and when your Lord took from ch uh, the children of Adam, from their emergence, their emergence, meaning before we came out, and their descendants as well, and they testified for themselves, am I not your Lord? They said, indeed, Shahidina, we testify, lest you should say on the day of resurrection, indeed, we were unaware of this. So God is reminding you because God is never unjust. God is never unjust to the people, right? If you read Quran chapter 10, verse 44, God is never unjust, but it is the people who are rather unjust. Indeed, God does not wrong the people at all. Inna la la yazlimu nasa shay'a, right? Walakinna nas anfusahum. Yes, Limun. So God says, indeed, God does not wrong the people at all, but the people are wronging themselves. So now, the fitra of God that he has established us on, before we came to the earth, we already testified with God that he is our Lord before we came to the earth. And we know there's only one God. But how come when we come to the earth, we forget? And God is telling us in Quran chapter 30, verse 30, that is the fitra, that is the nature that God has established mankind upon, that we know there is one God, and we bear witness that he is God. But how come we forget? So I will help you out. Ladies and gentlemen, which of you can remember what you did when you were six months old or one year old? Which of you? I dare you. Don't come and tell me the stories your mother tell, told you, your father told you, your brother told you. Or somebody who's the witness who uh, took care of you told you. No. Which of you can remember what you did when you were six months old? You can't remember. Which of you can remember what you did when you were one year old? You cannot remember. I'm serious. You can't. You understand? So since you cannot remember, it is befitting for somebody who is just to remind you. And who can be more just than God? Do you understand? So God is now reminding you that before you came to the earth, you actually bore witness that he is your Lord. There is one God. And that is the fitra which he has established mankind upon. So every human being coming to the earth automatically knows he, there is one God. But how come we forget? Because the human being is forgetful by nature. We forget. Yes, that's the human being. 
And this is what makes the human being ignorant and ungrateful. Yeah. Do you see the point? Because when the person is being reminded, instead of paying attention to the reminder, he wants to be arrogant. So that is why Quran chapter 20 verse 2 Ma anzalna alayka al-Qur'ana litashqa illa tazkiratan liman yaksha so the Quran is to serve as a reminder for whoever fears that is his lord right uh -huh. so the Quran is to remind you things that you have forgotten we for, we you intend to forget certain things in life so you need something to remind you and that is why we have our phones to set alarm on the phone if your brain is working 100%, how come do you need to, why do you need to rely on your phone to set alarm? You tell me. Why? Do you understand? So you need something to remind you because by nature the human being will forget. That is why it says la yadillu rabbi wala yansa. My Lord does not go make errors nor does he forget. Only God doesn't forget. Only God doesn't make mistakes. But you and I we can make mistakes. That is why you have to cross-check what correction officer says. And likewise, I cross-check the Mushrik scholars. So let's, let me take the last caller, then we go, right? Uh -huh. Thank you very much, uh, Abdul Rahman. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that. Let me, let me try to call back the last caller. Then I move to TikTok. So if you want to have fun with correctional officer against the Mushriks, you are welcome to join TikTok, right? Uh -huh. So let me see. Uh, the caller who called... Wa alaikum, Baba Shuai. Wa alaikum, my brother. Your name and your, where you are calling from? My name is Ashraf. I'm calling from the United States in New York. Uh, brother Ashraf, nice to meet you, bro. Yeah, yeah. how you doing, my brother? I, I like what you're doing on, uh, on TikTok. I really like what you're doing. And um, it really makes sense. Thank so you. Whatever you're saying over there, it makes a lot of sense. Thank you, thank Only you. Only people... People who are against you that they do, they, they are mostly they, they just don't want to know. They know the truth, but they don't want to believe it. That's it. Yes, yes. You Thank know? you. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. They are mostly you know, yes. It's, it's, it's very very clear. You know, only you have to be just stupid, just not believing it. That's it. Exactly. That that's true. I agree with you. I agree with you. I you know, I'm originally, originally from Togo, but I live in New York. Aha. Uh -huh, okay. That's nice. Actually, actually, when you started speaking, I was about to say, are you from Ghana? Because I bet you are closer. Togo, Togo, Ghana, we yeah, are closer yeah, to yeah, each yeah. other. So, Yeah, so Baba Shwago, please, I want to ask you one question. Right? No problem, yes. Okay, when the Quran, God descended the Quran, uh, yes. who, who brought the Quran? Is, uh, is, uh, is uh, Prophet Muhammad or how the Quran descended? The, the Quran descended from God to, G, to G, Jibril, that is to the Holy Spirit, right? To Jibril. Okay. To Jibril. Then he brought it to Muhammad, but it is not okay. by a physical book. It is not. Okay. It is not as a physical book. So it came mm -hmm. as a revelation and inspiration. Okay. Aha, uh -huh. and it was placed into his heart, because according to God, the the the, the the most important part of the human being which makes the final decision is the heart. Okay. So the heart is the one which contains every matters relevant to the human being. Okay. Uh -huh. So now, whatever you have in your heart is what you spill out. Okay. You understand? Okay. So what he okay. what has been placed into his heart is what the prophet now brought out. So it has to be written down. So according to Quran chapter 25, verse 5, even the Kafirs at his time, they bore witness that he wrote the verses down. Wow. Yes, yes. Quran chapter 25, verse 5. He wrote the verses of the Quran. Yeah. On the 5, verse 5, right? Chapter 25, okay. verse 5. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. So, and there is no way they will say that if they never saw him do that. They said it. And God never said they are lying. 
Wow. Yes, wow. yes. But because, uh, the reason why I'm asking you that I'm here with a sister here, and yes. then uh, you know, she was like uh uh Muhammad. I said Muhammad is not God. Why people take Muhammad, you know, they put Muhammad at the same level as God. Muhammad only delivered the message and that's it. Yes, there's no God, there's nothing, just human being like us. Exactly. You know. As, uh, and then people go to the Kaaba, they hold the Kaaba like the Kaaba is something that is gonna, the Kaaba gonna help them. I don't understand. They are idol worshippers. Yeah, even the Americans say that the Muslims worship black box, you know, and the, when they say that, they are right because a lot of Muslims, the way they do it is like a Kaaba. I don't understand, but Brother Shrive, you know, I really don't understand that. Man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you see, the, the problem with people is uh, I would advise everybody to pay attention to Quran chapter 6, verse 116. Uh, Quran chapter <laughs> 6, verse 116. God okay. says, if you obey most of those on earth, they will mislead okay. you from the way of God. Right? Okay. They only follow assumption while they are only guessing. Right? They follow okay. conjecture. So whatever you see people doing, that is not what you have to follow. Don't follow the masses. Always investigate why people do things. Okay. The people, most of the people who go to the Kaaba, they kiss the Kaaba, they bow down to the Kaaba, they adore the Kaaba, they go crying, they pray to the Kaaba. Wallahi lazim, they pray to the Kaaba. Look, uh, you you stay online. I have a video. I have a video. Let me see if I can find it here. They pray to the okay. Kaaba, and you <laughs> see. <laughs> Okay, uh, you see, she says she don't believe it. She says she don't believe in it, you know? Oh, no, no, believe in, look, you can't, br my brother, um, my brother Ashraf, be you can't force yeah. people to believe what you say. Believing is a choice. Exactly. Like, you can choose to believe something and reject something. It's never by force to believe something. Exactly. But however, exactly. if you say, can it be proven? You understand? Okay, she was, she was talking about Surat Rijin. Madani, uh, read the Surat Rijin. Now, I can't do that. Please. Allah, the Suru, the Suru, Surat Rijin. Bara Shwab, she was talking about Surat Rijin. Uh huh. And then she said, he did what? You know, I tell her to read it because she's a, she's an officer, you know. I tell her to read it so and she can tell And her she it. said the Surah to Jin, it did what? What do what does she need Surah to Jin for? <laughs> she was like uh, the Jin accept Islam through to the Muhammad or something like that. She was saying stupid stuff like that. No, he no, said according to the, the verse, the chapter, chapter 72, verse 1, okay. they they had the Quran. They listen okay. to the Quran. He never said they, they oh. listen to Muhammad. Like people always okay. want to put Muhammad in front, whilst the mess the message the message is the relevant aspect. That's why I don't understand. Okay, okay. Speak English. The brother Shwab can understand. Speak English. Speak English. Speak English. 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 Please. I'm listening to you. Man. Uh -huh. So you see, the, the problem with people, we have something we call, uh, for people watching, there's something called we, we call cognitive dissonance. Uh, cognitive okay. dissonance, what, what happens is because when people are very induced with, with the faith they have, the religion they are practicing, regardless of yeah. them not having even evidence, when you say okay. something contrary to whatever they believe, they yeah. they be, they get emotional and they are thinking you are going you are talking against their faith. Yeah, brother Schwab, you know why, why I believe you totally on the percent because all the time you come online, you tell them to come to debate with you. They all run away. Yeah, they do. You know, even want to face you. You know what I'm saying? Because everything you bring, you bring the evidence from the Quran. Yes, they cannot even prove nothing. Nothing. Yes, they can't. No, they, they look stupid in front of you. They cannot even, you know what I'm saying? That's why I said now, nah, those people now, nah, they, they are stupid, man. For real. <laughs> you know? If you 
know you're speaking the truth? Why you are afraid to approach the truth? Why? That is the point. If you are speaking you know, the truth, why are you scared? I don't get it. Yeah, exactly. You go to the Maka and you take the stone. You throw. You throw. You say you throw at the shaitan. <laughs> are you stupid? Shaitan is gonna wait for you over there to come and throw the stone on him. It doesn't make no sense. <laughs> Shaitan, they say, Shaitan. It's like, it's like I tell you to go outside and put and, and take the stone and throw on the on the wind. Like you know, what I'm saying it's stupid. They say Shaitan will leave it's countries stupid. like Finland and Germany and UK and go to Saudi Arabia. That's where Shaitan is sitting. That's so they go to, exactly. <laughs> you know. It, do, it doesn't make no sense at all, for real. I'm always following you, and I listen to you. I say, no, it's making sense. You're making sense. Thank you. Know? you thank all you. Those people, they just only come to just to make you, you know, they, they just stupid, man. For real. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Uh, before you go, Brother Ashraf, uh, you know, you know, there's one brother here. You, you Are you Kotokoli? Do you speak Kotokoli? Kutukuli, yes. uh -huh. I have one brother here, Salis. He's also Kutukuli. So he says you have ACC. ACC. Uh, ACC, uh, yeah, yeah. You, you know ACC, right? Yeah, ACC. Uh -huh. He says you have ACC. That's good. It's a good one, Ashraf. Yeah. Thank, thank you very yeah. much, brother Ashraf. I have to end the program on Facebook and YouTube. I'll be going to TikTok. So if you're on TikTok, kindly join me there. I'll be facing the oh, well, just take my number and uh, my name is Ashraf and if I have something I'm going to call you inshallah and uh, uh, then you know, yes, meet uh, I've seen I've seen your number about, uh, yes okay, I'll, I'll save your number inshallah I, I've seen it so okay. I'll save it inshallah uh, uh, thank you thank you so much salam uh, alaikum salam yes uh -huh. so ladies and gentlemen 2 hours 15 minutes I think it's enough for Facebook and YouTube, right? So that people can re-watch the program uh, based on the things I've discussed and also the guy Abu uh, Tamiya, right? So kindly take your time, watch, enjoy the program. But if you're willing to see Baba Shaib go at it with the Mushriks, kindly follow me on TikTok, right? Uh -huh. Then let's see. Right. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is where I bring the topic to an end. And hopefully we see you again. Uh, and God bless you all for those who actually donated for the GoFundMe Hop Nima uh, feeding program. Right. So, so far, at least now we we are we have done about uh, almost 80. And then I'm going to put the updates on the GoFundMe page whilst we are trying to reach more than that, that number, inshallah. So I'll be putting the updates there for those who have actually donated. You see the updates. And I appreciate your support and uh, the patronage you give me. I appreciate that. God bless you all for being uh, uh, with me along the journey, seeking for the truth. Uh, I appreciate your support. Till we meet again next week, you'll find me here. And also I'll be, I'll be having a program with brother, uh, Dr., Dr. Omar Zaid. Uh, so anticipate uh, on that also. We'll be having a discussion concerning the Nation of Islam. Um, Malcolm X, or Louis Farrakhan, and uh, uh, their Elijah Muhammad. And so we'll be having that discussion. So anticipate and keep your fingers crossed. I appreciate the time. God bless you till we meet again next week. This is where I have to say peace out to all those on Facebook and YouTube. But join me on TikTok. Thank you.